Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, and that breaking news comes from the Lions, who have just suspended four players for gambling on sports. Receiver Quintez Cephas and safety C.J. Moore have been suspended indefinitely and released from the team for gambling on NFL games. Wide receiver and former first-round draft pick Jamison Williams and receiver Stanley Berryhill are suspended for six games for betting online on non-NFL games. General Manager Brad Holmes says the players made decisions that are not consistent with the organization's values. Another player from the Washington Commanders has also been suspended indefinitely. We will be following this story and we'll have so much more for you coming up in our later newscasts this evening. Our other top story this noon, a Cub Scout meeting takes a nasty turn when an argument goes too far. Police are now searching for the man who assaulted someone inside of a Warren Elementary School during that Cub Scout meeting. Our Rod Maloney just talked with the police commissioner as they ask for help to find this suspect. Rod, what's the latest? Well, the latest is the person who was assaulted, and we'll get a look at that here in just a minute. Uh, is now listed in stable but serious condition instead of critical in the ICU. So that's good news, at least for the victim. He's 47 years old from uh, center line. But we want to show you the picture. This is the mugshot, or at least the picture of Tyrone Sledge, 26 years old from Warren. And the Warren Police Department are looking for him. They're saying, if you know where he is, if you have seen him, please call the Warren Police Department immediately. So here is the video of what precisely happened at Roos Elementary School a couple of days ago. And it was at a Cub Scout meeting where we are told that they were, uh, there was a, a, a discussion, essentially, between the victim and a woman whose child apparently was at the meeting over a handicapped parking spot. When that altercation, or at least that, that discussion, uh, was uh, ended, the woman allegedly called her brother, who was Tyrone Sledge, at least that's what the police are saying, and then he came to the meeting and actually slugged this man. And again, I want to repeat, that's what the police are telling us happened at this point. So let's hear from uh, Police Commissioner Bill Dwyer from Warren PD and hear what he has to say about what happened here and what they need to do about it. These type of acts are going to be tolerated here in Warren. They shouldn't be tolerated anywhere. I know that obviously, you know, cities like Detroit, they have their problems. Well, we're the third largest city in the state. Occasionally we'll have an incident of this sort and, and we're very active as far as making sure that persons that are responsible for, the, for their actions are held accountable. Okay, so once again, uh, Warren Police looking for assistance for 26-year-old, finding 26-year-old Tyrone Sledge of Warren. They say that if you see him, do not approach him. They believe him to be violent and dangerous, and therefore they want the police only to handle that. If you do see him, they say call Warren PD. Reporting live here in Warren, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thanks so much, Rod. Pretty traumatizing for the scouts in the room as well. An 11-year-old boy is recovering in the hospital this afternoon after he was shot inside of a home. This happened on Churchill near Rosa Parks and West Grand Boulevard on Detroit's west side. Investigators tell us the boy was jumping on a bed when an unsecured gun discharged and hit the boy. Trenton Public Schools are closed today after a possible threat found on social media. Police say a parent called them last night after her daughter saw photos online which seemed to threaten Trenton Public Schools. Police say they began searching for the post and then the superintendent canceled classes as a precaution. Police say they don't believe the threat is credible or immediate, but they do continue to investigate. The Supreme Court faces another deadline today that could determine the fate of the abortion pill, Mifeprestone. The decision comes amid deep divides over abortion rights across the country, and NBC's Drew Petromel reports from Washington. When the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year, the idea was to allow states and Congress to sort out the abortion issue through the political process. Now, less than a year later, abortion is back in front of the Supreme Court, and the issue is raging in political battles all across the country. After the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last summer, medication abortion remained an option nationwide, even as some states restricted abortion access. But the court's expected decision today could cause major change. So when we see what is happening in different places in our country, which is really about rolling back progress. 
The court is considering restrictions to the use of mifepristone, a key drug in medication abortion, including stopping the drug from being shipped through the mail and how many weeks into pregnancy it can be used. This is about the Republicans' ongoing quest to criminalize abortion care in this country. Democrats are taking aim at Republicans over the issue, and while some in the GOP appear unfazed... Am I worried about the politics of it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Others voice concern that the party's stance on abortion is hurting them with voters. Many pro-life people still don't want the heavy hand of government making that decision for women and girls. We will not win the popular vote in 24 if we continue down this path of extremism. No matter what the Supreme Court decides, Red state, blue state, we we can hide. Hide. The, war on abortion is nationwide. the battle over medication abortion is likely to continue in the courts and in politics. The deadline the Supreme Court set for itself to make a ruling on this issue is just before midnight tonight. Drew Petromo, NBC News, Washington. All right, Drew, and as we approach the 2024 election, there is one competitor we are still expecting to hear from. President Joe Biden has yet to announce his reelection bid, but we are told it may happen soon. Biden's advisors have said there is no formal timetable for the announcement, but they have long eyed April 25th, the anniversary of Biden's 2020 campaign announcement. The president is expected to launch his 2024 campaign with a video message, the same as he did four years ago. Today, Dearborn will be celebrating the end of the holy month of Ramadan. And for the first time ever for a U.S. city, Dearborn is offering today as a paid holiday for city employees. Nearly 50 percent of Dearborn's population is Arab American, and most are Muslim. Today, City Hall offices, public libraries, and the 19th District Court will be closed. Tomorrow is National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, and local police departments and hospitals are partnering up with the DEA to help prevent medication misuse. You'll only be able to drop off drugs in the form of pills, so in order to dispose of liquids, you'll need to request a special drug deactivation pouch from your police department. But according to the CDC, nearly 107,000 people died as a result of drug poisoning last year alone. So to find a drop-off location, just go to clickondetroit.com. All right, we're rolling into the weekend. It's Friday, a little bit of rain out there, but forewarned meteorologist Ashley Barrissey is here now with how much we can expect and the rest of the weekend. Yeah, so Chrissy, we're going to be in and out of the rain showers, not a complete weekend washout, so that is the good news. But to start your Friday, we are looking at some widespread light showers across all of southeastern Michigan. This is a look at exact track 40 radar. I call this nuisance kind of rain. We can deal with it. It's just not great if you're driving the windshield wipers on and off. And it doesn't matter if you're in Riverview, Lapeer, or even west of Salem, off towards Hamburg. We're dealing with some of those light showers at this hour. You can see the line, how it's developed ahead of an approaching cold front. And so we're going to be in the cloud cover throughout the rest of the afternoon once this passes, getting in the later part of the day. But a much cooler and even a little clearer air mass is off to our west. And we'll see the uh, impacts of that as we go into the weekend with some cooler conditions on tap. As we take a look outside, some low-lying clouds, 50 degrees in Detroit, 47 in Ann Arbor, 55 in Port Huron, 47 in Adrian. Temperatures stay rather steady throughout the day but you can see just how much cooler it is off to the west once that cold front approaches. Tonight, 45 degrees for the overnight low. Rain will return just after midnight into tomorrow morning. We'll have scattered showers on Saturday. Also, a few possible later in the day on Sunday. So given that we're going to be in and out of the rain, and if you have outdoor activities, you'll want to take our forewarned weather app with you on the go. Not only can you track the rain on radar, but you'll get push notifications if rain is detected in your location. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks, Ashley. Well, today, one more state has officially banned the death penalty, where the decision came from and why it took so long. Plus, a baseball video game is showing a major part of the sport's history, what this will mean for the series. Stay with us.